For as long as man has been walking around on the planet, he's been fascinated with monkeys. It's not hard to see why. Monkeys, apes, chimps, they're all amazing creatures. There's one on a bicycle. They're always smiling. They always look good when they're trying to sell you tea bags. Even when they're stuck behind the bars at zoos, occasionally flinging their poo at you, they're just like a bunch of bored, hairy old men. But why is science fascinated with them? And what weird and wonderful experiments have we been performing on them? This is the Curious Man's Guide to the Science of Primates. This is Clyde. If you're over 30, you might remember him from the 1980s Clint Eastwood film Every Which Way But Loose. If you're under 30, he was in a film in the 1980s with Clint Eastwood called Every Which Way But Loose. Clyde was an orangutan, a primate, the closest animal relatives that humans have. And because of that, because they're seen as a glimpse into our ancestral history, we are fascinated with them. In fact, humans and chimps share so much DNA, about 95%, that some scientists reckon they should be reclassified as members of the human family. There's even been evidence suggesting that Neanderthal man and chimps interbred about a million years ago. Well, that didn't stop one man from trying it again, just for science purposes, you understand. Meet this man, Russian scientist Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov. In the early part of last century, he was one of the global experts in artificial insemination. He also had a beard, but that bit's not important. In 1925, he managed to get himself a grant for the equivalent of $10,000 to try and answer the question that had been plaguing him all his life. Would it be possible through injecting a lady chimp with human sperm to create the human Z, a hybrid between human and ape? It's not as weird a question as you might think. Nature's full of hybrids, mainly to do with zebras, actually. Have a look at this. This is a donkra, a zebra and donkey crossbreed. When a zebra mates with a horse, it's called a zorse. We've been crossbreeding dogs for years. The jungle have a few ligers walking around. This man was just trying to take it the next step, and he'd obviously never seen Planet of the Apes. You maniacs! You blow it up! So that's what he tried. On what's possibly one of the most ill-advised family outings of all time, he took his son to West Africa with him to give it a go. Together, they inseminated three lady chimps with human sperm, sat back and waited for nature to take its course. Remember, this was the early part of the 20th century. There wasn't any IVF available here, so this was probably done the old-fashioned way. Now, legally, I can't illustrate what that would look like due to several obscenity laws, so here's a sound clip of my mate Dave doing an impression of it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, to answer the question on everyone's minds right now, we don't know whose sperm they used. They never told anyone. They said that it wasn't their own, but let's face it, that's what we'd all say if we were caught in that situation. So, three lady chimps filled to the brim with human sperm. What happened? Nothing. Two chimps failed to get pregnant, and the third one died. Stop it. So they tried it the other way around. They tried to get the sperm from several male chimps in an orangutan called Tarzan into human ladies. They even got lady volunteers willing to be inseminated. The people, as you can understand, thought that this was a bit much. Dr. Ivanov was physically attacked on the street and even the KKK sent him abusive letters which would make anyone think they might have gone a bit too far. By this point though, the Russian political landscape was changing. Ivanov found it more and more difficult to get anyone to sign off on his experiments, and he ended up being arrested by the Russian secret police for not supporting the revolution to overthrow the Tsar. They deported him from Russia and sent him to a forced labor camp in what's now known as Kazakhstan. We couldn't afford to go there, so we went to Corfu instead. Kazakhstan's winters were cold, in a place where the evening temperature could get to minus 38 degrees, this 60-year-old man didn't fare too well at all. His lab was shut down in 1936, and the day before he was due to go back to Russia to have his status restored, he died of a stroke. So mental experiments mixed with monkey sperm, a scientifically fascinating story employing nightmarish methods. It'd be nice if we could just stop there, but this is only the tip of the iceberg, just the start of the curious man's guide to the science of primates.